Hey guys, I want to show you something. Check this out. Because we had Robert Kennedy Jr. on and we had a company call or a couple companies call after that and say, yeah, just stuff about him. We're not advertising on this episode. My advertiser was like, you guys need to take the episode down, you know? And, uh, and, and we ended up. And what's wrong with him? Nothing. Nothing. Guy's fucking brilliant. And I've known Guy's him. Guy's a smart fucking I've guy. I've known him for seven years. Great guy. Right. I mean, a neat man. Right. Let me tell you this. Let me fucking tell you this. This is America. You can fucking have whoever you want on your podcast. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Imagine a sponsor that's sponsoring you, calling you and telling you that you can't have this guy. What sponsor did it? Oh, Peloton was the... We just got an update. Um, it was Peloton, Peloton was the band was the per people who wanted an ad out. What do they sell? Fucking bikes, the stationary bikes. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Peloton sells stationary bikes, and they got a problem with Robert fucking Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. You Peloton. <laughs> what? Do we do? Who the fuck are they? Yeah, first right. Of all, are yeah. you kidding me? Uh, fuck you Peloton. Yeah. I do, wanna... we, do we have Pelotons in the gym? Are those Peloton? Asports, no, no, there's bikes next to it. Asports, As, yeah, we're getting rid of them. Yep. We're getting rid of the Pelotons. Pelotons are out of the gym. Whoever uses the most can fucking have them at home, but they yeah. can't use them here, brother. That's what you do. That, yeah. That's what you do. You stop fucking using their products and you fuck them. I am extremely passionate about the situation in this clip. As a content creator that utilizes honesty as the backbone of his reviews, I strongly disagree with any advertisers telling any content creators what they can or can't do. This also is a form of dishonesty from the content creators that agree to these terms. With that being said, if you want a stationary bike, fuck Peloton, get a yes soul. One week ago today, I was 450 pounds. Start writing a yes soul and look at me now. If you are trying to lose weight, get fit, or just shred a few pounds off the midsection, get yourself a yes soul. In all seriousness, being prepared is something most of us strive for in this community. The number one way you can be prepared is to have your body ready. Think about the stamina and overall jump in health you would gain from riding a bike daily. One that you can answer emails on or possibly watch your favorite show. Now you have no excuse to not fit in that daily workout. Say yes to your soul and get a yes soul. So I know this is gonna be very controversial and I don't, I'm not trying for it to be. I'm just trying to understand. I'm not saying I'm right and I'm not saying somebody else is wrong. I am just trying to understand. Now, be, I wanna be clear, I love hinder and eyes. I love hinder and eyes and I'm just using them as an example in this case. Hinder knives, like I said, I love their knives. Absolutely love them. They're some of my favorite, to be honest. I love the designs. Uh, I love what they stand for. I love the USA made. I love their hardware. You know, there's a lot of things I freaking love about their knives. I'm trying to wrap my head around Hinder's HRC on their steels. And I'm going somewhere with this, so, so, so um, humor me for a minute. They are running their magnet cut at 60 to 61 HRC, at least that's what they told me when I bought the Project X one year ago from uh, from one of the Blade shows from their booth. 60 to 61. Okay. Their geometry is very thick geometry. Um, you would argue that it's for toughness, right? I, would, I wouldn't debate that. The geometry should be for toughness, especially if you're looking for a tough knife. Granted, really cool, right? Um, and in a way, I like that they are kind of thick, you know, that they're a little bit on the tougher side. You know, I don't want all my knives to be mega slicers. I want some of them to be, a, you know, a little bit tougher. But we're still talking about a pocket knife here. We're not talking about a shovel. We're not talking about an axe. We're not talking about a pry bar. We're talking about a knife, right? Something that the, the, the biggest quality and best quality of a knife is going to be its edge, right? Its edge and how well it holds an edge. Now, we know Magna Cut right at 65 hrc is tougher than m390 20 cv 204p at 61 hrc so we know that it's tougher than that and vanax so it's tougher than you know quite a bit of steels and that that's at 65 granite between i think 61 or 62 to 65 it loses like 40 percent toughness right understandable it loses like 40 percent toughness but it has a lot of toughness to lose right 
And with any steel, right, the higher the HRC, the more edge retention, the higher levels of sharpness, the, the better it's going to hold bite, and so on and so on and so on. So a lot of great things come out of a steel being harder, right? The one thing that comes out of a steel from being softer is toughness. And to my knowledge, the argument and debate that they have is for toughness, right? So they're doing a lower heat HRC, arguably lower, right? Like I said, I'm open for debate on this, but you know, I, um, looking at the stats of magnet cut and all the cut tests I've done and all the knives I have in them, right? Most companies right now are running at 63 to 64. I don't see them all running around saying their blades are snapped, their tips are snapped off. I have knives with very thin geometry over 64 HRC, right? So a lot of companies, Protec, Hogue, Chris Reeves, um, who else? American Blade Works. Uh, just so many companies. 63, 64. Even Kershaw's Bel Air, I think, was 62 HRC, right? We did an edge retention test on that. 62 HRC on that. Which I'm not complaining about. Granted, I'd like to see it a little bit higher, but it actually didn't do bad in the edge retention test. Uh, you know, anyways, my, my point is... They're doing their HRC, right, lower for toughness and their geometry for toughness. So we're obviously looking at a knife that's going for toughness, right? Then why do we see this? This is my Hinder collection. Obviously I like Hinders. This is a brand new Project X. It's never even cut anything. It's been opened and closed, you know, hundreds of times or whatever, you know, but it's never cut anything, never been sharpened yet or anything like that. I did think about doing an edge retention test on it, but see how easy that was? Look at that. Let's lock it up. Make sure it's locked up solid. Wash the engagement. That's a light tap. I know it might sound loud, but it's light. Let's go lighter. Let's go lighter. So, where's the toughness? Let's check out another one. This is a 24 with a steel lock bar insert. Bam. 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 Let's do that again, just so everybody can see. Alright, next one. Another 24. So this one does not have a steel lock bar insert. This one's pretty good. It did, it has failed on me, but right now it's not. So I'll give it credit. I don't think I need to go any harder than that. So good job on that one, even though it, it did, it has failed on me. Here's an XM18, steel lock bar insert, bam. Half track, I don't think the half track will do it on me. Let's just lock it up, make sure we're locking it up good. Oop, it did. <laughs> Man, I'm not hitting these very hard. Here's the three inch. Now I did this before on a live and a lot of these succeeded, but I, I think I was just going so light on them. Um, but here's another three inch. This one's got a really strong lock bar. I don't think this one will fail. No, this one's good, but you can really feel that lock bar strength on this one. And then, my favorite. This is the XM18 Skinny Sheep's Foot. I fucking love this knife. Bam. Bam. Let's lock it up again. Make sure everybody sees that. So, what is that? Uh, two, uh, two, four, six, eight knives. Six out of eight failed. Now let's check out some budget knives. This is like a, a $50, $60 knife. Okay. Let's try another one. Okay. Okay. 
And anybody complaining, saying, why would you, why does this matter? Why does this matter at all? Like, what are you doing with your knife to do that? Um, go watch my video from the other day where I was putting pressure on the spine of a knife with my thumb and it closed on my finger, which that company, by the way, is doing everything they possibly can to, to make that right. They've even went through all their stock of that, that model and, and found a couple other ones and took them off the market. So they, they're actually, you know, so I'm not trying to hold any fault to them or trying to complain about what happened to my finger. Like I said, it was my fault what happened to my finger. I'm just saying this is something that can happen from any knife if there's the possibility of it easily failing, right? Not, not, not failing from an insane amount of smacking, but easy failing. I'm not trying to come for hinder in any way, shape or form. So this isn't like me trying to start anything. I'm really not. I'm trying, like I said, to open up a discussion and understand why. Obviously the knife is not for hard use, right? It's not for actual toughness. You could say that they don't want their blades tips to snap. They don't want uh, their edge to chip or roll, right? You could argue that the geometry already does that, right? Like you could take a knife right now with Hinder's geometry, it's 65 HRC, and it's going to be far tougher than say the Tactile Maverick if it went to 60 HRC, right? I, I, I would bet $1,000 that the one is going to uh, break or bend or whatever before the other. Uh, just because it's just geometry, right? The the thicker geometry, the more robust, because like my hinders, what are they? They range between like 26 thousandths up to like 30 thousandths, if not higher. Um, with And that's behind the edge. Behind the edge thickness is like, you know, an average between like 26 and 30 thousandths behind the edge. So that's thick geometry, right? And, and it's not like the, the blade is really thin and it just has, you know, a slow taper. That is with a thick blade stock with a bl thick blade stock and a thick edge. So the blades overall are super robust, which I'm cool with, I'm cool with that. I just don't understand why lose the edge retention, right? We already have the toughness. The geometry is the toughness. Why lose the edge retention? Why lose the sharpness? Why lose its ability to hang on to the bite, right? Because from my experience with MagnaCut, the lower the HRC, the shorter lifespan it has for holding bite, especially with a fine edge. So what happens is it gets slick. Now, the higher you go, the better it gets. And it's actually really, really good with higher HRC, at least the stuff that I've tested. Like there's, I've seen some MagnaCut that just, it hangs on to bite and it gets nasty sharp and it hangs onto that, that nice stickiness. But you know, with lower HRC, I just, I haven't seen that. It always seems like it, it goes downhill, which of course it does, right? Of course it does. This is, I mean, this is pretty common knowledge, you know, with, uh, with steels, you know, and HRC. So I'm just trying to understand why we're going for so much toughness or toughness, right? Because it's not actually tough. So let, <laughs> why are we going for so much toughness on a folding knife that, that can't even, uh, take any impact whatsoever, right? No impact. Um, it, it's not going to be, you're not going to want to, to, I mean, I know when you're squeezing the lock, you're making it stronger, but you guys know what I'm saying. It, it's obviously not built for that. Um, or at least they're not testing for that. I, I don't know. So I'm guessing that they don't have a bunch of people complaining about that. I can't imagine they also have a bunch of people complaining that their edges or their blades are snapping, right? Because otherwise they'd have probably a lot of bitching about failing too. So why not just go with a higher HRC for better edge retention? Why would you want your knives to go duller faster when it's not going to hurt anything? Say for instance, if Hinder ran their HRC, it's 63 to 64. What do you think would happen? What would happen? Like, what would be the catastrophe? What, what would be so, so crazy? It would have better edge retention. That, because that's the only thing I see happening. That's it. I don't see any other negative. Where's the negative? I don't see it. So this is the, the, the conversation I'm trying to open up. 
and like I said, I'm not trying to start controversy. I'm just trying to understand what is the benefit? What's the benefit of running a software HRC when you already have fixed geometry on a folding pocket knife, not a hatchet, not an ax, not a fixed blade, a folding pocket knife. And let, let me be clear, I don't expect Rick to do anything different. I don't, this is just open for discussion. Um, he's gonna sell his knives regardless. People buy the hell out of them, they're great knives. I do like his knives a lot. Uh, but, you know, I obviously have a disagreement with this, or at least I'm trying to understand. I don't expect him to do anything different, you know, when they're flying off the shelf. Why would he, right? Uh, from a business aspect, it just doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but I'm just I'm just trying to grasp it, you know, because I personally like to know, or I, I like to know, or like to think that American made knife companies are doing their best to provide us the best product. I like to know that, or I like to think that at least. Obviously there's gonna be some that are a little bit more cutthroat and are all for the money, which I get, trust me, it's a business. You should be for money with a business, 100%. I, I do not hold any, I don't have any problem with that. But I still think you should be striving, right, to give your market or your community or whatever you want to call it, a, a great product, a product to be proud over and to not have like weird excuses to have lower quality in certain areas, even if you maybe don't have people bitching about it, right? You know, it should still be something you strive for. And you know, like that, that's something I, I actually applaud some other companies that are actually trying to do their best to the best of their ability to bring us as best heat treatment as possible for their knives, right? And for what their knives are for, which is usually cutting. I'm just trying to understand. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.